Hello, everybody, and welcome, welcome, welcome. As you probably know, the time is different. It's 2 p.m. now. I'm trying to get this together. I appreciate you, Maria Graham. Thank you for coming in early. And Miss Kay Renee's beautiful garden. Thanks for coming. So I just got notification that I'm live. La la la. I am alive. <laughs> doing 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 silly things. Trying to figure out who's on first. So I want to pull up the chat. Give me one minute, please. I appreciate each and every one of you. Okay. So weekly create in chat. Yes, I do try to do that weekly. My crafty Leo. You're here. Uh-oh. I hear an echo. Pop goes the weasel. You know what happened? I tried to call my mom just before I went live. And of course, everything gets discombobulated. The jewelry spot, thank you for coming. Let me try to say hello to everybody before it scrolls down. Crafty Leo, Pescatarian Gardener, thanks for coming. The jewelry spot, Mike's Chaotic Gardening. Thanks everybody. And if you're here for the replay, I appreciate each and every one of you. I appreciate the moderators. I appreciate those of you who are channel members. The people in green are channel members. Yankee Sister, hola. Oh, oh, I can't even say it. Yankee Sister, Homestead, Homestead, Auntie Maria, Mike speaking to everyone. Oh, the funniest thing happened to me. Of course, I'm still in Arizona. Da, 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 da. Birthday balloon is sagging, but it's not out. I guess it can last until next Thursday when I go live. I will be back in Connecticut, live in living color, and I will be presenting from there. So today I had to finish a, a gift for someone. Someone commissioned a gift for a giveaway for the Chris Mahana Kwanzaa holidays, and I was rushing to finish it. I'm putting stuff in the garden outside. I'm doing a desert garden after, here for Sissy and Auntie Joanne and Uncle Roscoe. And as the New Orleans gardener said, it's going to be a kitchen garden. It's going to have in it, let me see, what did I put out there? She can probably tell you because she's looking at it. Oh, I put french french radishes i put plenty of garlic i put sage i put oh my goodness so see so you have to tell them everything that's in your garden so far and what i have planned hello malaa aka erica maria graham says my hair is so cute today oh let me tell you guys what happened so Auntie Joanne and Uncle Roscoe went out, left me home alone. I was finishing stuff up and I went into a different bathroom than I usually use. I usually use the one that's closest to my bedroom and the studio that I'm, <laughs> that I've gorillaed, right? Something she told me and I said, oh, my skin is so dry. I'm here in the desert. I will put some of this lotion on. So I'd already had my, sh my shower and I came in. I put this lotion on my arms, on my legs. Then I'm reading the lotion, right? And it says oatmeal, colloidal something. It was body wash. I, I was putting body wash on instead of lotion because I didn't have my glasses on. And I had to go run down the hall, get in my shower, take another shower to wash all this raw soap off of my skin. It wasn't lotion. <laughs> it wasn't lotion at all. Oh my gosh. 
leave me home alone. Home alone. I am always doing something. Coach Mary Ma, hello and thank you. I appreciate each and every one of you. Each and every one of you. Mike says, that's funny. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. And then uh, you don't want to see my hands up close because I don't wear my gloves in the garden. This hand, look, I, I climbed the Grand Canyon barefooted and with one hand. So I went in there and I tried to put some little nail hardener on it. And guess what? The nail hardener must make your cuticles hard too because they look a mess. It couldn't look worse. I see Auntie Joanne is home. I heard the dogs barking. So I figured, and I heard the garage door open. So um, yes, thank you. Thank you each and every one of you for coming in. I appreciate all of you, those of you in the bushes. I appreciate the watch time. And hopefully you will subscribe to the channel or become a member of the channel. Ty Lily, how are you? Ty Lily and I have been friends since before, before I even had a channel. And she's been so kind, so kind. And I appreciate your love and support, even when I didn't know what I was doing. So, oh, so that's what happened to my hair. Maria Graham, I had to hop back in the shower again, and I didn't have time to put a shower cap on, so it got wet, and it was doing something. Oh, my goodness, goodness. And Sissy wasn't here to help me get these little ends together. So what is everybody doing? I, I want to tell you guys a story, and I'm glad that Ty Lily is in here. How many of you can, this is, this is a, an icebreaker question. How many of you know a country other than the United States that eats collard greens? Can you put it in the chat? What other country, what other country, I hear, I had the echo on the other, on the other one. What other country do you know eats collard greens? Auntie Joanne and I went to a grocery store here in Arizona last week, and we had a lady ringing us out actually for Thanksgiving. I think I wrote her name down. Actually, her name is on the receipt. And she was telling us that she eats collard greens in her country. Kay Renee says the Philippines. Yankee Sister Home said Africa. I don't know. Um, look, maybe I can write it down. The Philippines, Africa. I don't know if they call it in Africa collard greens or callaloo. I know that they do have callaloo, but this lady was from a European country. Hello, G Mama grows hard in the garden, not soft, but very, very hard. Russia. Mike, you're close. You're close. You're close, Mike. Oh, my goodness. Uh, wellness with Fringle Mamas. And she says, in a meeting, uh, BG. Okay. What does BG mean? I don't know. Or my brain is not going. It's going so fast. So I will tell you, this lady was from Croatia. And she said they eat them all the time there. Auntie Joanne has the receipt with like with her name on it. I thought that was so interesting. They call it something different. Oh, Ty Lily said Romania. That's very close to Croatia. Or some of the European countries have changed names, changed names over. You were close, Ty Lily. Ty Lily. And I'm going to ask when I get back home because um, a lot of my neighbors in my building are from from Russia and from the Ukraine. I know how to say Dobre Utra means good morning in Russian. And after the war, the people who were from, from the other country didn't want me to say hello in that language. Hello, Nikki, the everyday life of an OCD-ish Czech Elog nation. And you say Dobre Randuk for hello in 
la 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 <laughs> the other language so i thought that was very very interesting so i want to maybe auntie joanne will come up because i did a short yesterday we went to the thrift a local thrift store and we went carousing i went to buy some some jeans so that i can uh, upcycle them romania is big on using comfrey and i know that they use comfrey for medicine and the skin and a lot of other things g mama grows hard has dropped the link for to join the friends and family membership the dollar 99 a month helps me to get things that i don't have for the channel to grow and i'm working on other other little things and equipment i don't have a lot of equipment it's growing it's growing it's growing and i'm learning to use the equipment that i have like i'm trying to learn how to put end caps or something in i will learn how to do that in the next little bit and i will learn how to get nightbot to help me when you put your name in it will drop your channel link so i'm working those are some of the things i'm working on and other links in the garden so i finished a project that's going to be um well i don't know so i will keep my big mouth shut but the 12 days of christmas will be coming soon and i think erica my fly family and others but i know erica my fly family and others are grow big tv hello joe and thank you for coming i appreciate you i appreciate each and every one of you for those of you who you don't know, Grow Big TV is the Garden State Gardener. That's Joe, and he's been a supporter of the channel. So Auntie Joanne and I went in um, because I told you the story about me and the lotion. It wasn't lotion. It was soap I was putting on my skin. Some of you don't know that I, I have a a vision impairment, but it doesn't stop me from doing anything. I want to encourage any of you that have impairments, whether it's age or physical disabilities, do what you love and love what you do. You'll make some mistakes. You'll find me that you never see me outside walking with my camera. Why? Because when you only have vision in one eye, everything is sideways. It looks crooked. You have to actually measure to get it straight. So Auntie Joanne and I were walking into the secondhand store. I'm walking with my camera. It's going every which way because I, I don't have um, a gizmo, whatever the thing is, to hold it straight when you're walking. So we went in. We didn't have any pants. And I wasn't being rude when I said I was looking for big pants because that's where all the fabric is. But oh my goodness, the jeans in there the jeans in there were a crazy price. They were crazy price. And so I didn't get any. I went to another department and I found some fabric. Unbiased LLC likes to get fabrics and old quilts and cut them up to make bags. I've done a lot of quilting. So I was walking around looking for quilts. Joe says exactly, do what you love. I love gardening every single day. If it's only for a few minutes, I have to touch the soil. I have to plant something. I have to do something that's artistic, draw. I actually sketch out a lot of things and make a plan before I do it. So I will show you what I got. I found something, a couple of great pieces, but I was going to cut up this cute, this cute to death quilt and make a bag out of it. Auntie Joanne swooped up with her long legs. She walks so fast, you guys. She takes the biggest, longest steps. It takes forever for me to walk around and not trip over things. 
But she came up and she said, oh, that is gorgeous. This quilt, somebody hand applicated, hand embroidered it. It had never even been washed. You could tell that the quilter had, you know, folded it under because you have to. You're a bad artist, but you like your work. Nobody has to like it except you. Do what you love and love what you do. So I gave Auntie Joanne this quilt. Or, and you're not going to believe the prices that we had. Then I found a piece of fabric. It is like four yards of it. Would you like to see it? I will get up and get it because I was making a feed sack, which I called the small weekender bags. Oh, da, 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 da. well, I will turn it. Somebody came in with her quilt that is all handmade. Look at it. Hold it up some more. Wait, I can do it. So your arms. Are... Look at the chickens on there, you guys. Hand embroider. How cute is this? The butterfly. Maria Graham likes butterflies. The, like the chickens. The chickens. The wheelbarrow. The flowers. The basket. The flowers. Oh, How cute is this? And all this is hand, hand done, hand applique. And then the wheelbarrow, all this was stitched in the ditch by the quilter. And look at these. Look, look, look. And somebody didn't want it. Oh, my gosh. Sissy, do you want to tell how much you paid for it? I don't remember. I think it was, it was the price, $5. The, it was less than $5. Less than $5. I have to tell them about the lady when we were coming out of the store. It was in the bag, and she was like, oh, that's really oh, it was. It was in a bag, and the lady was in the parking lot and just saw the outprint of it. And she saw it. She came over touching it. It was like, what? Well, you missed that one. Missed but um, the baby that's going to be, use this one is going to be Auntie Joanne yes. on her favorite sofa. Yes. And speaking of which, we have been making dog bone pillows to pieces. They're probably three. They're none of up here. <laughs> <laughs> there are three of them in use. Three of them in use. And um, wait a minute. And then she found a, a dish towel that was made in Portugal. And the way you can tell expensive fabrics, when you look at it to see how many times it has gone through the being dyed and pressed, it's a different color. I'm going to hop up and show you what i found so look at this my arms are going to get tired can you see this this is like four yards of fabric and i guess it was sewn to be a valance or something i'm using it as is i've already used a piece of it and Thanks for tapping that like button, everybody. And look at all this fabric. This is double-sided for, this is like four yards of fabric. This, Auntie Joanne looked it up because it has a designer's name on it. And it shows how many times it has been through. Nope, I sewed over it. It's been through being dyed and it was just 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 gorgeous so i ordered some oh here is this was handmade come sissy you can show it what oh, you gotta do the pillows first. oh she said i have to do the pillows first so this this one was the original neck bone pillow it was my old worn out one that I always leave here. Hello, Deidre, the analytic gardener. And I left it here, but then it didn't fit the new cover. So I put more in it, but it's too, it's like the baby bears porridge or the three little bears. This one's too hard. 
And then Auntie Joanne stuffed another one. That one's just right. And this one is soft and it's just right. And we ordered the, the polyfill from Amazon and they sent like 8.8 .8 ounces. It barely stuffed this, which was a good thing. We Oh, and then we had to open it, pull it all apart. I mean, it was a dog fight getting that apart. Hello, sweet thumb. Uh, Grow Big TV loves the color. Thank you. But what I had to do, this was so thin, we had to back it. put a lining in it and we put some orange in there. Then this is the third one because why make one if it's so cute? We made two. Auntie Joanne did the stuffing. So it looks like these are staying here. And although this one fits my neck a little better, I can't stand a hard pillow. So these are staying here. Or I might make a lining. Oh, no, this one is nice. This one is nice and soft. So, and this is the um, embroidered, hand embroidered. It's like cross stitch in Portugal, a dish towel that we found. I don't know. Can you see the chickens? I can't hold my arms. Yeah. Can you see the chickens? Hand embroidered. It's like cross stitch. I'm sorry. It's cross stitched in Portugal. All this. The whole thing was like $11 and some change yeah. at the store. And then the man said, uh, I need to see, are you over 65? I said, yes, I am. So he said, well, I need to see some ID. I said, see some ID? Can't you see this gray hair? You hear my bones cracking while I'm trying to open my wallet to get that money out? That's my ID. Oh, nobody need no ID. I have to show it to get alcohol, too. Oh, that's the one that's for a gift, but I'm just not going to show that one because she doesn't know she's going to keep it or give it away. So I was commissioned to make a to make a a a small weekender bag for someone, and she loved it so much she said she might not give it away. That's her business. I'm not telling who it is or whose bag it is. But I was busily working on that today. Both of you guys have a good eye for great, unique finds, Yankee sister said. The, um, the Those things, Auntie Joanne actually, um, I'll tell her, Sissy Maria Graham says, your hair looks pretty. Hers always looks pretty. K sings 55. Hello, everybody. <laughs> welcome, 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 everybody. I appreciate each and every one of you. And it seems like people are get oh, what happened with the first pillow? I was telling you on Amazon, they said this premium polyfill, we ordered it. Nobody said it was totally flat. It was like a half inch thick and two things. And we had to pull it apart and puff it up. And it was 8.8 .8 ounces. Uh, G Mama Gross says, if you'd like to purchase a gift for Auntie Ellen, I have an Amazon wish list. I, I wish that I could get through the things and see them a little better. But I'm not complaining, God. I'm just talking to my friends and my family on YouTube. I'm happy to wake up this morning, happy to be alive, and happy to be able to see out of this eye because you know what? I was legally blind at one point. Hello, Bougie Prepper. Thank you for coming and welcome. Hola, hola, hola. I was just telling them that that about the 12 days of Christmas, I will be included in that, you guys. Can't stop. Thanks for coming. Love you. And he loves mowing and cruising. And I do too. But I figure like this. I am so blessed to have family here in Arizona for the price that I would pay for a nice cruise or something. I could just get a plane ticket and come here and enjoy my family for a month, not five days, for a month. And we do everything together. I've been cooking my mother. If you're listening, I'm not going to say anything bad. 
cooking my um my body parts off mr president at mike's chaotic gardening can't stop is waving to everybody lioness crafty leo so how many of you you get 20 ounces of michael of polyphyll on michael's for eight dollars it's a great deal well yep tushy tushy's a good word hi mother thanks you for thank you for watching mom everybody says hello they love you mommy's tickle pink when you guys speak to her on she can see it on on her tv and here they put it on her her nurse puts it on her tv for her and go amote mother love you so I finally, I was so annoyed with this little 8.8 .8 ounces for $13. So I went to walmart.com and I ordered some more. So if it's a bargain and I got the, what is it? I got the bargain for Monday. I ended up getting Auntie Joanne Stevens Boucher Prepper says hello. She was just up here looking at something that may or may not belong to you, Bougie Prepper. So I went on Amazon and ordered a 10-pound box of polyfill. And 10 pounds is actually 160 ounces because there's 16 ounces in one pound and times 10. That's 160 ounces. So it ended up being 25 cents a pound. So guess what? My, my poor sister and brother-in-law, their family room has this big box. And it was like all the air was kind of sucked out of that. When it puffed up, it started puffing up. It was almost as tall as me. So it looks like the family will be getting a lot of dog bone pillows for Christmas, for birthday, for Easter, for Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa for everything, for everything. So I wanted to speak to everybody, but I like to show you guys a couple of things. I wanted to talk about the neck bone pillows. And, but first I want to show you how to, um, hi, Mrs. Panky, mommy, they're talking to you how to gardening with bernie hello and thank you for coming thank you for coming those of you who sew let me see how i can do this because i want to show you how to thread a bobbin and never 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 ever have to unthread your sewing machine again so this is I, this one is brand new because I think it's only been used once. It lives here at Auntie Joanne's house and I fastened it. So what you do is, I like this. This is, I, I'm not getting paid by anybody. This is Coates and Car Clark thread. It's for machine quilting and it's really, really heavy. I use cotton in all of my quilts and i use cotton thread never use like a poly thread well i shouldn't say never do what you want to do but if you put poly thread in a cotton quilt the thread is going to be stronger than the cotton and may tear it apart so for this featherweight machine i put the thread through a hole and put it on this side and this is not the size thread it's not a regular but I'm, and i'm using black so that you can see it i'll move my hand in a minute let's see no that won't work will it okay so i will reach around and start to wind it a little bit, a little bit. Then, I will get the scissors. And now if you're using a regular sewing machine, uh, even some of the far, foreign ones like Husqvarna 
or any of those, you do that. Then you push this little level forward because this is an oversized spindle. And I'll just push the start button and whoops, up, side rail. It squeaks, but it's new. Whoa. Sorry, you guys. Uh-oh. I'll just hold it. Because the thread is too big. Uh-oh, it's going now. But I will show you in like just a second. Sorry, I've got such a bad angle for the camera. Oh, it stopped squeaking. I guess the newness is wearing out. And it fills to a length that is, and then it stops. However, the featherweight bobbin requires special winding for those of you who had have featherweight machine. Okay, so now look, I will show you. I will lift this slowly so you don't throw off. Hey, Black Guns and Gardens, thank you for coming and welcome. GT Junior grows it, Alaska. How are you? I do have your address. But I don't have, or I haven't made any more, any more postcards since I've been here. But you're going to get another one, and I do have your new new one. So this is, I don't know if you can see, a fully wound bobbin. It's really even. And what I do is, between projects, those of you who sew, Crafty Leo, I know K. Renee's Garden sews. And you know what? This cotton is so thick. I'm just going to hold it up because that's the difference in cotton. Don't look at my nails, everybody. My kids are going to disown me. So look how thick this is. That's the difference. But why I'm showing you this is because I was working on a, a small weekender bag today. And this is what I sew my bags with. This is super, super heavy, and I don't even have a regular piece of thread to hold next to it. Uh, just regular, regular all-purpose thread is, actually, I can get some for you. Just so that you can see why, why sometimes you spend an extra penny to get something. Now, regular all-purpose thread does everything. You can use it for everything. Funny thing, I never knew they had bob, bobbin winders. Oh, my gosh. I have not. I have not wound a bobbin. And what this does is saves you time. If you only have one or two bobbins, you, you, you stop. You have to unthread the machine, thread it again. It's nerve-wracking. So I buy a little rack of extra bobbins for each type of machine. What size needle do you need for the heavy thread? You can use your regular 12 needles. I like to sew with 14 and 16 needles. Why? Because I sew a lot of jeans. I sew a lot of quilting. And the hole in it is bigger so that I can see it, you know, with my vision. I do it because I'm lazy. Now look at this thread next to, I know it's a darker color, but you can actually see how much, or maybe not, see how much heavier, heavier the thread is. So the bobbin winder, when I bought these at Wally World, I think they were $16, $17. I'm for sure they're not $20 or more, even with inflation and this by the way is the regular size thread that goes on that's a regular spool of thread that goes on and there's nothing wrong with this i always carry this in my little red bag that you see where'd i put it that you see on my sewing table i could take this little bag anywhere in the world 
and make anything you want made. I can repair anything you want made for you preppers. I can sew clothes. I can sew bodies if an emergency came up and you could, didn't have the stitches. Um, I, I've had to put stitches in when I lived out off grid. For those of you who don't know, I have lived in big cities, small towns. I have lived off grid like GG Naturals and Eco. I have bought raw land, borrowed daddy's bulldozer to clear small things, had to rent big bulldozers to take the big ones down. I had horses. I had cows. I had pigs. I had chickens. I had ducks. I had goats. So don't let this little curly hair and lipstick and stuff fool you. I, I've, I've worked hard in my life and I've worked soft in my life and made a lot. Mike said, a zombie apocalypse, you're following me. And for those of you who don't know, I'm pretty good with security, my own self, if you know what I mean. But I do have team members who are skilled in martial arts as well as um, anything that's needed. Anything that's ne needed. Yes. I, 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 I make the flow charts, Mike, and um, everybody else does it. Safe travels at Grow Big TV. Thank you. You fired. Oh, okay. I don't know what that message is. So that being said, let's go. Oh, and another thing, you see this little bobbin? The, this, is, this goes to a featherweight machine. It's unlike any bobbin you've ever seen. And you see the white marking on it. I sometimes use like really red nail polish. When you go to classes and whatnot, people take your bobbins. You put your machine in the shop. The shop knows the original ones from the ones that are reproductions. This machine was made in 1941. So I have three of the original bobbins that came with it. And I bought a couple that were empty. I usually, those of you who, who sew Gquat traditions, yes. For those of you who don't know, and, and it's no secret, my first job when I weighed 124 pounds, and sorry, you guys, the dog is barking, and had to get up to 135 pounds of muscle, I was a police officer. You have to be at least a marksman to carry your service your service revolver. So I'm not only a mother, a grandmother, a great grandmother. Yes, I have some skills. I have some skills. So this little thing is what I keep Auntie Joanne's bobbins in. And be careful where you take your things. If you get one of these featherweights and you, and you, so with that, be careful where you leave it. And your frugal mama, yes. You know, the same thing that the military goes through basic training, the 60 squat thrusts in, these, in one minute. I used to do all that, chin-ups, everything. I used to run two miles every day just, just because that's what I did. That's what I did. I don't do that anymore, but I am a renaissance woman, uh, Ty Lilly. You name it, been there, done that. So that's why I have a channel to show you guys some of the things that I've done. Now, I only do the things that I like to do, and I enjoy sharing it with you guys. I'm just going to turn around because we talked about the neck bone pillow. That is the most comfortable thing you ever put under your neck. I usually travel with the round, like, horseshoe pillow that most people travel with or you could buy at the airport for like $20, $30. Well, I have one, but I, and I have straps on it that I put on. When you're putting straps on, again, those of you who have small children, don't put straps or elastic. I'm slowly turning you around. Bougie Prepper might or might not see something. Ugh. That belongs to her. So now, and I am in pretty good shape. Uh, 
<laughs> Wellness with Frugal Mama. So she used to walk seven miles to work when I was in the guard. We used to like walk back in the days in Connecticut, like three miles, I don't know, to school and back. And we weren't supposed to talk to boys on the phone in high school. So I'd be talking to the boys, everything. I was on the track team, a gymnastics team. What else? A major red. I was a major wet all the way through college in HBCU Howard University. I still get chill bumps when the band strikes up, do -do -do, and they start dancing. I did a live yesterday. No, it wasn't. It wasn't a live. It was a short, and I was planting in Auntie Joanne's garden. Here's a little sample of that fabric. So um, I was in, I'm in pretty good shape. I have problems with a couple, with joints, and I've had some replacements. But for 75 years old, I'll take it. I'm good. I'm good. Oh, oh, yes. A bouche prepper saw something when I turned around. It belongs to her. <laughs> but uh, she has a channel. She goes live. I, I'm not getting in anybody else's business. So let's show how to do a neck bone pillow. So I have three of them cut out actually i'm going to do this one it's a little bit wrinkled it's a little bit wrinkled because i was working on um, bougie preppers bougie preppers whatchamacallum whatchamacallum and so these are just plain orange i was going to use it as a liner for the dog fabric but I won't. But what you want to do, and you can find these patterns everywhere on the internet. You can find them. Thank you for the super sticker, Frugal Mama. You can find them on a download. If any of you wants to email me at ellenpanky at gmail.com, I'm going to, to send you a... I can send you, I can email you the pattern for this. So what to do is it's, well, this is what I do. This is not the only way to do it, but I fold it. I fold it in half. Bougie Prepper is having a giveaway on her channel tomorrow, you guys. I'm not sure what she's giving away for the 12 days of Christmas, but uh, Bougie, you can put your information on it. So what I'm doing is marking the center of this dog bone. And because I'm going to have to stuff it, I'm going to leave an opening Say a little larger than three inches. I'm going to leave like a four inch opening. Two inches on either side of the middle. On one side. And one of the most important things I'm going to do is on the long part of the pillow. I'm going to mark the center of there too. The center of there. And the center of there. Then there are three parts to the dog bone pillow. It's like a triangle. And I'm going to mark the length. You don't need to see my face on this part. I'm going to mark the, yes, it's a black mark. I'm doing it so that you guys can see it. And because I didn't take the black thread, and you know, I hate sewing with black thread on a black sewing machine and black fabric, but I did it for Bougie Prepper. I must love her. 
I must love her. So I'm marking the center part of the long piece on each of the dog bones. Okay, because when you see the patterns on the internet, they don't exactly show you how to sew them. Okay, so the first one that I did, I'll put this one over my shoulder because the first one has that four inch mark. So I'm going to put it on top. There are two pieces. Normally, uh, sometimes there's a right side and a wrong side. There is no right side and wrong side to this one. But what is important is that you m m match up the middles, that little dot in the middle of the neck bone. It's important that you put a pin in there because that's where you're going to stop sewing. You're only going to sew half of the pillow. So see this little dark black mark on here? I'm matching it up with the black mark on here. And I have black thread in my sewing machine, but and I'm going to sew three eighths of an inch. Normally with quilting, you sew quarter inch seams, but this, because it's gonna get some wear and tear. Oh, I know what I forgot to do. I didn't forget, it's like time. This is, I pre-made a little strap. It's a slightly different size. Some people like a big one to put their hands around. The strap is what you use. Hi, Sonia Sigler. How are you? Thanks for coming. The strap is what you use to adjust the pillow when it's when it's behind your head. Uh oh. I don't know what just happened. Uh, just a minute. Oh, there we're back. Sister Ellen is so giving. Thank you. Thank you. So this is the strap that I'm going to use. I'm going to cut it in half. And what I'm going to do, you know, the pin that I put in the center over there, this does not have to be centered. I'm going to put the strap next to there because I know that I'm going to stop sewing where the second pin is then just because i put the white stitching you can stitch around the whole thing i'm just matching them up i'm putting the strap the same place on the other side in between the two pieces of the sandwich Just a minute, you guys. All right. So, I'm just going to put a pin to hold the strap. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is sew from this first pin around to the opening on one side and then stop. Then I'm going to skip and sew the other side to the pin and stop. And this is where the magic happens. You can sort of see my hands. So, all right. So I will start here. And I'll move my hand in just a minute, just a minute, because 
stitch forward, stitch back, and just want to make sure the two edges are even. And I'm sewing with Auntie Joanne, sweet little machine. Sweet little machine. Let me cut the, th the threads at the end. I love this little featherweight. She's older than me. My machine was made in 1948. Auntie Joanne's machine with this beautiful scroll face. Hers was made in 1941. So I'm going over to the first opening. And I'm going to backstitch a little. Because you always backstitch so that so that it doesn't come loose on you and as you know i'm all, i'm using this heavy duty thread that i use for my bag but if it's worth making it's worth making right so now i'm going to the other side of the opening why am i am i leaving an opening because that's how we're going to stuff the pillow when we're finished when we're finished okay so where is the other start mark here it is back stitch and here we go this um machine because i got auntie a this is a high speed the first the first electric thing she had I, I didn't trust it. It seemed like it was shocking or giving little sparks. So we got her this high speed one, but we're not going to get rid of the original antique foot. We're keeping it for, for I guess, historical value. Okay. So I'm excited to show you guys because everybody should have at least one of these pillows. Okay, so now here's where the magic happens. Here's where the magic happens. So let me just show you this part so that you can see the black stitching. You see where the black stitching shows up? So what I'm going to do I'm moving it apart so that you could see it. Okay. I'm going to sew the other half, except I don't have to. I'm going to flip this back. And. I'm not going to sew over this middle part. I'm not, so I'm taking that pin out. And this pin is holding the little handle underneath. The little handle that we put there. So, I'm going to fold this out so we have turn the top piece you see this it's like you would normally sew two pieces of fabric together except we don't want a flat pillow we want to stuff it so we're folding this back exactly in half you see where it's folded in half Okay, now the piece that I had on my shoulder, of course, fell off. So what we're going to do is take the third piece and put it on the top, match the curves up. Hello, 10, the educated natural. Thank you for coming. We appreciate each and every one of you. 
So I'm only going to sew this pillow. You make it only sewing three seams. There are only three seams in the whole entire pillow. So I'm going to show you the three seams. And ta-da! Remember that, that, that middle mark that we're not sewing past? So we're lining it right there. And we're not going to sew past there. Okay, so I'll hold it up for you guys. We're sewing this end. We're sewing this from this pin halfway around to the other pin. You see the back? This side is already sewn. Okay, so let's get it. Let's do this. So we are sewing three pieces together. And I'm making sure I don't go past that little black line that I made. And normally I backstitch two or three stitches, but I'm going to go a few more. Why? Because, oops. Did I miss? No. Because we have the handle that's holding the pillow together. And I'm bringing you back over here so that you can see it. And I'm just sewing around the edges. And you know what? This doesn't have to be precise. Crafty Leo, I think you told me that you have four children. Maybe it's three. And I no three because I remember you making the quilts for them. So I'm just sewing around this bottom half of this dog bone. So I didn't pit, I didn't mark, but there's the little black mark. So I'm not going to sew past there. Actually, I do have to line these up because, and you don't sew over pins. I'm back tracking so that the stitch, the handle doesn't come out. So, you see this? Taking these pins out. All of you can make a pillow for your car, for your sofa, for your bed, whatever you want. So I'm taking this pin out and you never want to sew a pin in it. So guess what, you guys? Now, sorry, you guys, I can't see, but guess what? Look, here's the triangle already. Here's the opening that we're going to stuff it as soon as we do this one last seam. So I'm putting the edges together. So anybody that wants one of these cozy, comfy pillows, you can make one because we're going to make one in this very session. There are 10 pounds of stuffing downstairs, but guess what? Whatever game is on tonight, we watch with Uncle Roscoe. He likes sports. So I'm going to sew this final seam. It's only three seams. It would have been finished, except that I'm talking, 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 and trying to show you guys the details. Otherwise, 
I would be finished. It doesn't take long to do this, you guys. So we're going to go back up and put the third seam in. The third seam is all it takes. Just want to make sure I don't go so over those other two. So a couple stitches forward, a couple back. Okay. Here we go around the mountain when she comes. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. She'll be coming around the mountain. She'll be coming around the mountain. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. So when this one is done, everybody, my family, the Jequat family, why? Because good friends become family. And family is everything. Yes, I'm sewing it a little bit sloppy, but that's because I'm talking and not paying attention. Oh, I don't want to do that. Okay, so la 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 la. This is how you make a dog bone pillow. Everybody calls it a neck bone pillow because it goes behind your neck cut these extra strings and as a matter of sewing when you when you have curves here I am you guys when you have curves and things you clip the edges so that they stretch so I'm going to put the camera back down so you can watch me Cut the curves and then we'll turn it inside out. Inside out. So I'm going to start at this third, and it doesn't have to be exact. Let me see, I have some smaller scissors here. Thanks for tapping the like button, you guys. This is a full tutorial on how to make a neck bone pillow. I will go back and edit it when I finish. And put tutorial because if you ever have to make one, this is all you do. This is what you do. I'm just being careful that I don't cut my seam. You know what, you guys? How about does that help or make it worse? Uh, put it. Put an H in if it helps. I turn. I think it's making more of a shadow. I'm going to turn it off. Yeah, I think it's better without it. What do you guys think? And I'm just going to keep clipping the edges. Clipping the edges. So it doesn't pucker when we... Ouch! Almost puckered my finger. Missed. And... Now we'll do this one. And you don't need a lot, just a few. Just a few so that it looks nice and it stuffs nicely. Look how nicely this stitch is in the sewing machine. It doesn't do any decorative stitches or fancy stuff. But for sewing straight, you can't beat one of these old singer sewing machines these old black ones i have one that's actually painted blue but it was an older machine that was already damaged so i didn't ruin the antique value of it i just made it usable for me Ta -da! look we're getting ready to open this baby up and you will see the neck bone in effect I'm so proud to be able to show you guys little things. And you know what? When you go to the airport, and I know because I went in the airport shop, and you see these pillows, it's 30, 40, 50 pillows uh, in there. They're, they start at about $20. You can get a couple 
of fabric. You can use some old fabric. You can make old jeans. Anything you want. And make your own pillows. And I'll tell you what. The three that are downstairs are being used. Hi. I'm back. Everybody. So, now, look. La, 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 la. The pillow is done. The pillow is completely done, except for the stuffing. I'm going to open her up. Turn her inside out. I guess this will be my pillow down in the family room. I Oh. Here's my chopstick. Actually, it wasn't a chopstick, you guys. My chopstick is in New Haven. This was a gardening stick. It used to say rosemary, and I washed it and <laughs> wrote over it so that it would be known that it's a sewing stick. So all I'm doing is pooching it out, pooching it out. I didn't bring any stuffing up here, although there's 10 pounds down there, downstairs. There'll be stuffing for all my future visits. And this is a third. Now, let me push out the other side. Okay. Okay. See, it's all poofed out. And here we go. Sticks are handy little pokers. Okay. So, do you guys want me to stuff it now? Or um, it's a little after 5 p.m. I know that 6 o'clock, Gina Jean is coming on and doing a giveaway, I believe, for the, I believe for the 12 days of Christmas. Yes, Yankee sister. I just use a hand needle. As a matter of fact, that same little black bag. The same little black bag because I was, oh, GT Jr. wants me to stuff it. Okay, you guys. Okay. Uh, this one has my little hand needle in it. Why? Because I, I accidentally dropped it in the den, in the family room. And I didn't want that to happen, so I put it in here. Okay, hold on one second. I'm going to go get some stuffing. Um, you guys entertain each other. I'm going to use one of, oops, one of my birthday gift bags and run get some stuffing. Take off my reading glasses. Ta da! So I don't fall. Left, right, left. The stuffing lady is coming. She didn't want me to go down all those 24 steps. I'm on the second floor. And the, she's a left, right. She's calling Cadence. Right, right. Sissy, so, so wait a minute. Oh, no, show, no. Now show them this, how big this box of stuffing is. You could get in this box of stuffing. <laughs> this is a big box of stuffing. Who brings... Who brings that much stuffing to their sister's house and clutters it up? Oh, look, look, you guys. Oh, do you see how big that box is from the floor up? My sister is five, seven and a half. And that stuffing is almost as tall as her. <laughs> okay. So they would show them how we stuff it. You're oh, the you best. Go ahead, I got, I'm, I'm oh. I, I thought I, I just 
Oh, okay. okay. Bring that up to you. All right. Well, bring it closer so one doesn't have to lift their rheumatoid arthritis <laughs> to educate a natural. Are you near here? If you're in Arizona, come by. Come through. Uh, <laughs> come through. Uh, <laughs> so. All right. She said, I'm on my own. See, you got to be careful who you let in your house. <laughs> So, but this, if you guys were camping, whatever, these are the best, oh, these are the best pillows. You don't need to see my face. You need to see me stuffing, stuffing. So I like to start in the corners first. I think we have enough stuffing. You think so? Hello, Barb Brownlee. <laughs> so... This is, I'm sitting down. This box is on the floor. It's filled this whole thing. Plus we've stuffed a couple pillows out of it. A couple or two or three. So we're just chatting and stuffing. Ch chatting and stuffing. Yeah, I think we have enough. I guess, I, you know what? I should give away some pillows in a giveaway, but they charge so doggone much especially during Christmas, to mail them, to mail them. Or maybe I'll do a giveaway and make the casing, and then you guys get the stuffing wherever you are on sale. Look at this. Whee! I wonder if the clouds in heaven are like this. I guess this might be the closest. <laughs> no Yankee says that. Amazon, I didn't get the best deal. So I ordered it from uh, Wally World, and they delivered it at the front door. You know what? Poor My poor sister, I've had so many deliveries from Amazon. You know how they store your address? They moved my address from where I live in Connecticut, and they automatically pre-fill in the address for here. So sad about me taking over. <laughs> Oh, this is funny. We're, but you see this, you guys? This is fun. We actually had this big box down in the family room because we were all just sitting and chatting and stuffing. I, the box was hard to get open. Uncle Roscoe helped with that. And I don't want to get it too full because actually Auntie Joanne had a way of stuffing it. It was so silky inside. I, I have it to like in balled up little messes. Okay. And those of you who have children, make sure they don't put any of this in their mouth. Okay. I'm very, oh, I thought I, did, I didn't sew in it, but it's, she's just a curvy girl. She's, that's a curve over there. She's a curvy girl. And I'm not going to make her too stuff. Stuffing is the fun part. I wish I had your grandkids here, Yankee sister. Oh, you know what? We need to make some pillows together and let the kids stuff their own. Maybe after Christmas when you come by. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just a pillow. It's just a pillow. And you don't want to overstuff it. When you overstuff it, it's hard on your neck and you can't get... That little soft part. I lay on my side when I sleep. Uh, some people sleep on their back. It's perfect if you sleep on your back. All right. I think this might be enough. Enough. We'll see. Oh, a little bit more. A little bit more. Auntie Joanne has these nice little slim, cute little fingers that go in there. All right. Maybe a little bit more until it's like the baby bear's porridge. Just right. So, oh, I did the math. If there was like 
we'll just round it off, say nine ounces of fiber fill in the first pillow. And it's 160. We should be able to make like 18 pillows out of all of this. So check this out, you guys. It's going to fill in in the in the curves. She, this is a Coca-Cola bottle girl pillow. No, it's not a girl. It could be a boy pillow. And all I have to do is hand sew this little part right here. You think you have enough. So, I only went about 15 minutes over. What do you guys think about this? Be careful. Don't invite me to your house. I'll come over and start doing stuff all over the place. <laughs> all over the place. Well, I'm, I will go live on Saturday. I will be using this tonight because I'm going to take this needle downstairs and sew the opening. I don't know what we're watching on TV tonight in the family room. Lashes Journey, thank you for coming and welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Less than an hour and a half. And I, I think I only started sewing on it about 2.45. So everything was cut. I will say that part. But in an hour, an hour and a half, look, I even took care to put like the white part of the stitching down here, the white part down here, just little things. Night, night. So everybody, thank you for coming. I appreciate each and every one of you. This pillow will be left here in Arizona because who's carrying any extra weight? I only brought one suitcase with clothes in it. And ain't nobody taking, I have to carry Hershey, I have to carry my backpack, and that. So thanks for coming, everybody. Peace, love, and blessings. Do what you love. Love what you do. Good friends become family, and family's everything. You guys are my family now.